Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching Channels Television celebrating 21 years of professional broadcasting. This is the News at 10. A reminder of our major stories. Supreme Court gives appeal court nod to resume hearing of all appeals relating to the governorship candidacy dispute in the People's Democratic Party in Undo State. Chairman of INEC says there is no going back on the Undo State governorship elections on November the 26th unless the court rules otherwise. Senate condemns rising cases of jungle justice in parts of the country, ask federal and state attorneys general as well as the police to stop the trend. And US President-elect Donald Trump drums, uh, dr dumps his plan to investigate Hillary Clinton's emails. Do remember that all our top stories can be found on our website is channelstv.com and on youtube.com forward slash channelsweb. Log on to m.channelstv.com to view us live on your mobile device. You can also download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS and Windows phones from your respective stores. Besides the news and updates, the Channels TV app has an eyewitness feature. We encourage you to use it to share those pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the eyewitness menu and follow the instructions. Let's take a look at some of the pictures that you sent to our eyewitness portal now, beginning with this picture from Oyo State. It shows indiscriminate dumping of refuse around the Iwo Road overhead bridge in Ibadan, the state capital. Our eyewitness reporter is asking residents to desist from such unwholesome acts and is also asking the Environmental Protection Agency to mount surveillance around the area. Next is this picture from River State showing a flooded Elewenwo Road in Port Hackett. Our eyewitness reporter wants the authorities to improve on the drainage system there to save the road from damage. Now from Lagos State comes this picture showing a sand-laden truck on Ijebu Bridge in Egbe. Our eye raises concerns over the danger such vehicles pose to other road users and is asking road safety officials to look out for such heavily loaded trucks. And finally, also from Lagos State, comes this picture showing a vehicle which our eyewitness reporter describes as an accident waiting to happen on the Badagri Expressway. The eyewitness reporter wants road safety officials to be more vigilant on the roads. We do sincerely thank you for sending in those pictures as we ask that you keep them coming. The All Progressives Congress, the APC, has taken its campaign to Ilaje local government area, one of the riverine areas in the South Senatorial District in the state. The APC candidate Rotimi Atkerudolu assured the people that if elected, he will ensure that the area benefits from the dividends of democracy and the form of employment for the youth and development of infrastructure. It's just a few days for voters in Ondo State to elect a new governor, and campaigns have intensified. The flag bearer of the All Progressives Congress, Rotimi Akiridolu, continues his visit to River Ryan community. The APC training to Ilaje local government area is received with chairs all the way to the palace of the traditional ruler. The reception is also warm at the palace of the Olubo of Ubo Kingdom, who prays for the APC candidate and his deputy. We are going to set up a lot of industries here. All the youth without jobs will soon be gainfully employed. I cannot vote because I'm a king, but I have the power to convince the people on the way to go. The optimism is indeed high, as this APC chieftain says, nothing can stop the victory train. The sons and daughters that matter, and we know the road. 
it behoves you when you go out to bring the goods outside and bring it home and we have brought them home to say we cannot have serious development in this land if we are not connected with the federal government and therefore we must choose a party that has a federal connection as the campaign train leaves this community, the residents may not forget in a hurry the center of Akere Dolu's message to them, which is making them feel the impact of governance. And it's just days to the Ondo state governorship elections and the Alliance for Democracy candidate Mr. Olushola Oke is intensifying his quest to win voters to his side. At the party's mega rally held in Akure, the capital, Mr. Oke assured the people that if elected, he would restore wealth and prosperity to the state. A loud cheer from members and supporters of the Alliance for Democracy at the Freedom Park in Akure, the Ondo state capital. God bless you. Thank you very much, sir. It's tagged the mega rally of the party to demonstrate support for the candidate of the Alliance for Democracy, Mr. Olusha Laoki, in his quest to govern Nondo. <laughs> the AD candidate reels out his agenda for the state. These include the revival of moribund companies, massive job creation, and overall infrastructure development. In our government, we shall be transparent. We shall be accountable. Amen. We shall be honest with the people. Amen. We shall stand down with all our heart. Amen. We shall bring back the day, the good days of Ajashi, the good days of Adebati, the good days of Agagu. We shall bring it back to Ondose. And the people of Ondose shall rejoice. Our mission is to create wealth, to generate employment, to create capacity, to economically empower the people of Ondose so that we can claim our pride, our dignity, and integrity as a people. These AD supporters are hopeful of a good showing for their candidate in the fast approaching governorship poll. With God, if he is there as the governor of Fondo State, I'm surely convinced that he's going to lead Fondo State to a better land. I support Alliance for Democracy because I see it as a party that will bring the glory of Yoruba people back to Undo State. A large crowd at a rally is one thing, but the Alliance for Democracy in Undo State will be helping that this attendance would also translate into support through the ballot box come November the 26th. You're watching the news at 10 on channels television celebrating 21 years of professional broadcasting time now to shift over to our Buja studios where gloria Mezweke is standing by to take us through gloria hello gimba the chairman of the broadcasting organization of nigeria mr john momo is advocating a constitutional amendment that will remove the power to collect revenue from radio and television licenses from the local government councils and transfer it to the National Broadcasting Commission. Mr. John Momo, who proposed this amendment in his first official address as the chairman of the organization, calls for the empowerment of the National Broadcasting Commission, NBC, to collect the license fees on behalf of public and private broadcast stations. Such amendment will mean that public broadcasters will stop collecting adverts from the public, which will then become the exclusive preserve of private broadcasters. Our correspondent, Omelogo Nadi, reports. This is the 66th General Assembly of the Broadcasting Organization of Nigeria, which coincides with the final transition and handover of baton of leadership to the newly elected chairman of the organization, Mr. John Momo, and his vice chairman, Haji Asa Ibrahim. My to set the tone for the assembly, which focuses on plans for the broadcast sector development, the outgoing chairman of the organization says innovation, creativity and responsiveness are critical to the broadcasting association. So much has been done, but much more needs to be done, especially in the area of core professional areas of broadcasting. 
The role of the media as the developmental template setter, as well as challenges that need to be tackled to reposition the Nigeria broadcast industry, are central to discussions at this assembly. There is no stability in the sector and is drawing back the progress of broadcasting in Nigeria. There should be stability. Agenda setting within the context of the role of the media in the society is the creation and the sustenance of public awareness and the interest on key national issues by putting such issues in the front banner of national discourse. Then came the highlights of the day. I shall not allow my personal interest. The swearing in of the chief executive and his deputy. <laughs> This was followed by their decoration. With the handover of mantle of leadership to Mr. John Mama, the 12th chairman of the association and the first independent broadcaster to hold the position, his key areas of concern were stated without equivocation. Private broadcasters are allowed to obtain their revenue from advertising in order to guarantee their economic survival as commercial stations while the public corporations are allowed to operate a system of mixed funding. Public corporations receive a proportionate share of the revenue from fees collected from radio and television set license fees. Set license fees are paid by everyone who possesses a serviceable radio or television set, irrespective of whether the set is used or not. In our country, Nigeria, where the dual broadcasting system has been fully embraced and statutory recognized, the principles governing funding of the dual broadcasting system, as it is practiced in other parts of the world, are yet to be embraced, applied, and implemented. So we are advocating a constitutional amendment such that radio and television licenses be removed as part of the functions of the local government councils as has been espoused by the Rotao president, and the National Broadcasting Commission made to collect the license fees in trust for and on behalf of public radio and TV broadcasting stations. And this is my own emphasis. The proviso will then be that the public broadcasters will stop collecting advertising and instead make that the exclusive preserve of private broadcasters. Other areas which the new chairman is set to tackle are the establishment of a united and common fund to help eliminate industry debt, resuscitation of the Society of Nigerian Broadcasters, digital switchover, the education and training of members through collaboration with international broadcast organizations, and not the least, the establishment of a bond festival. For these projections, he sets the stage with the promise of a new era in the broadcast industry. Born shall be the national voice of Nigerian broadcasters. Amen. And together, we will take you all to the desired promised land. Omelongo, Nadi, Channel Television News. Well, hearty congratulations there. Still ahead on the news at 10, CBN's Monetary Policy Committee leaves benchmark interest rates unchanged. Well, that's in business news.